What is the longevity bacteria discovered in Japanese centurions? Kyo Tango study explained. That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Hachiak Takamiya. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. Okay, so Kyo Tango is a Japanese blue zone now. Yeah, so where is Kyo Tango? Yeah, it is in Kyoto Prefecture, which is next to Shiga Prefecture where I live. This is Lake Biwa. Yeah, and that's the city of Kyoto. So when you hear Kyoto, you often think of Kyoto City, but Kyoto is also the name of the Kyoto Prefecture. Yeah, and Kyoto Prefecture is in the spotlight at the moment because. Uh, Kyoto Prefecture has ranked fourth for men and third for women in the latest average life expectancy ranking in Japan. And that's uh, when the Shiga became number one. Yeah. So both Shiga and Kyoto are longevity prefectures. And Kyotango is this area uh, here. Yeah, uh, that no northern part of Kyoto Prefecture is in the spotlight. Yeah. Um, okay, for the details of this latest average life expectancy ranking, please watch my other video. It's called the Top 10 Longest Lived Prefectures in Japan. Yeah. And so Kyotango is famous for having three times as many centurions as the national average. Yeah. So there are 51,255 people living in Kyotango City, and then 116 of them are centenarians. Yeah, and that is three times as many centenarians compared to the national average. That is incredible. Yeah. Also, Kyotango is famous for the fact that the world's longest lived man lived here. His name is Jiroemon Kimura, who lived until 116. Yeah, at least, you know, until when this study was conducted. You know, I don't know about who lived the longest at the moment. Yeah, but anyway, he's one of the longest lived men in, in the world anyway, right? Um, now, Kyotango is famous for the fact that the, the resident's vascular age is 10 years younger than that of the national average. Uh, basically, they compare the people over 90 years old, yeah? Their vascular age, yeah, is 10 years younger than the national average. Also, uh, it is famous for Kyotango Longevity Cohort Research, yeah? So this is conducted by Kyoto Prefectural University of Medicine with the city of Kyotango, yeah? And then they studied, yeah, 1,000 people who are over 65 years old between 2017 and 2032. So that means it is an ongoing study. It is still uh, continuing, yeah? And they are looking at 2,000 factors of longevity yeah uh, so i think when the research completed it is going to be one of the biggest longevity study in the world yeah so i'm looking forward to seeing the result i mean they already have a lot of data now uh, some of which i will i'm sharing with you in today's video yeah Right, so there are three factors that they discovered, yeah? One is a traditional diet is maintained, yeah? Like seafood, high fiber, high fiber diet, yeah? And two, young vascular age, yeah? This is uh, mainly to do with high amount of physical activity. And then three, community communication, uh, they have many friends and social activities, yeah? So let's look at each factor. The first one, traditional diet is maintained. So seafood, yeah, especially seaweed and high fiber like beans. Yeah, they eat a lot of seaweed and beans. Now, this is interesting. If you remember that I often talked about Dr. Shoji Kondo, who is the author of the long-lived villages and short-lived villages in Japan. So... Dr. Shoji Kondo did 
discovered many long-lived veggies and short-lived veggies in Japan, and he compared the diet between the two. And then there are people in the long-lived veggies were eating a lot of seaweed and soybeans. So there's a correlation here in Kyotango too. That is interesting. And there's another food unique to Kyotango region, that is jacko. Jacko is a white bait, yeah, it's a small fish, yeah. Now, one woman who was interviewed on TV program said she grew up eating jacko. In fact, uh, in her family, they are using jacko as dashi. Dashi is a soup stock that we use dashi in almost any kind of cooking. You put dashi in miso soup and other dishes too. So in her family, they used jacko as their dashi. So he was eating jacko, you know, every single day. Yeah. And jacko, as you can see, is incredibly nutritious uh, food because it's a whole fish. Oh, yeah, I talked about Ichibutsu Zen Taishoku, remember? It's a concept in Japanese natural food movement that eating food as a whole. And when you eat fish, it is better to eat a small fish so that you can eat the whole fish, not eating a part of a big fish, right? So jacko is a perfect because you're eating the whole fish and you're eating many of them, right? So it's got, you know, bones, so meaning, you know, high calcium, and high protein, everything, right. Um, now, so two, young vascular age, yeah, it is to do with high amount of physical activity. So they do a lot of walking. Uh, senior citizens in Kyotango area, uh, you know, continue to walk a lot, and they do a lot of gardening, yeah. So those two are common exercises in all blue zones, yeah. They do a lot of walking and gardening, that is common, yeah. And that's the same in Kyotango. But there's another thing that is unique to this region, that is Kyotango Nobi Nobi Taiso. It's a set of exercises, yeah, which are designed by Kyotango City, yeah, uh, with the aim of preventing falls, fractures, and dementia. Yeah. So yeah, they, they have a specific exercises for their longevity. Um now. Uh, I, if I look at those exercises, uh, they're very good, very kind of a comprehensive you're using arms and legs and a lot of, you know, balance exercise and stability exercise. So it's, you know, the Dr. Peter Atia talks about, you know, four pillars of exercises and one of them is stability and balance. And, and I think this Kyotango Nobidobi Taiso includes a lot of stability and balance, you know, exercises. Yeah. Um, so three, community communication. Um, now, so when they come to do this Kyotango Nobi Nobi Taiso, because they do it in the community center, they don't do it alone, right? So it serves as an you know, opportunity to socialize with one another, yeah? So that is, uh, you know, contributing to the third factor, yeah? So Kyotango Nobi Nobi Taiso can provide their community communication, right? Okay, now, so the Kyotango study reveals another interesting finding. While seniors there don't eat much meat, relying more on fish and beans for protein, sarcopenia, which means age-related muscle loss, is low. Oh, that is interesting because this challenges the common belief that you must eat large amounts of meat for muscle mass. Oh, that is not the case for the people in Kyotango. Now, interestingly, the other day, I watched a video made by this kind of American guy who was talking about Okinawa, yeah? He was claiming that Dan Butner's Okinawa research was wrong because people in Okinawa are eating a lot of pork. Therefore, it's not a plant-based diet kind of thing, right? Well, it is true. People in Okinawa do eat pork, but I don't know if they ate a lot of pork in the past or probably now they eat a lot of pork. But even if they ate pork in the past, it was probably only hare occasion. Remember, I talk about hare and ke. So we have hare and ke. Hare is a festive occasion. Ke is usual. So we made a distinction between the two. Usually, we basically had a very frugal diet. And during the Hare period, we had, you know, feasts. So that 
often included meat and stuff like that too. Yeah, but that is the probably case in Okinawa. The main land, main island of Japan is very different. We didn't eat pork that much before the war. Yeah, um, because we didn't have livestock. We didn't have like you know um, pigs and cows and and that kind of animals. Yeah, uh, when we ate meat, it was mainly wild animals such as deer or birds or rabbits that kind of thing and then again that was only during the hurry period yeah i talked about the same thing when i made a video about yoshi toranaga you know this um, the character from shogun the years tokugawa that in their time you know they sometimes had meat but wild animals which was during the hurry period yeah so if you want to understand japan the hare and the care is essential. You cannot talk about Japan without talking about hare and care. Yeah. And then as far as main island is concerned, we didn't consume a lot of, lot, lot of meat. Yeah. So people in Japan were eating a lot of meat, especially in the past, it's false. Right. Having said that, having said that, this yeah, makes very sense to me. As far as I'm concerned, I am not surprised that people in Kyotango have a uh, big muscle mass. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Because they eat a lot of fish. Yeah. Fish offers key amino acids like leucine, which promotes muscle growth. Right. So uh, I think we can see fish is incredibly nutritious food source because it's high in calcium, high in vitamin D and high in protein. Yeah, it contains everything. And of course, the omega-3 fatty acid as well, right? But, but fish is not the only reason. Yeah, here is the interesting part. Yeah, now, moreover, researchers observed the correlation between residents' muscle mass and the amount of bacteria that they call longevity bacteria in their gut. Longevity bacteria. Right. So these longevity bacteria are abundant in the gut of the senior citizens in Kyotango. So the people, the researchers from Kyoto Prefectural University of Medicine compare the gut microbiome, the senior citizens of Kyoto City and the senior citizens of Kyotango City. And then they discovered a lot of this longevity bacteria in the residents of Kyotango City. Yeah. So now, after that discovery, Longevity bacteria is spotlight in Japan. It is everywhere. There are so many videos talking about it. Yeah. But they are all in Japanese. Yes. Everything in Japan is in Japanese because we speak Japanese, right? Yeah. So that's why you don't know about it because uh, nobody is talking about it in English. Probably this is the first video to ever introduce this longevity bacteria in English. Yeah. All right, so what is it then? What is this longevity bacteria? It's a butyrate producing bacteria. Um, I hadn't heard of it until I come across this Kyotango cohort study. Yeah, uh, you, you know about, you know, bifidobacteria or lactoacid bacteria. Yeah, but compared to them, butyrate producing bacteria is not so well known, but this seemed to be the key. Yeah. Uh, well, bifidobacteria and lactic acid bacteria are important too. So is natokin, natto bacteria. In fact, the two videos ago, I, I said that natto bacteria, the Bacillus subterius, the reason why I eat natto is because of this bacteria. And then this helps increasing this butyrate producing bacteria, right? And the same with bifidobacteria and lactic acid bacteria, right? So what is the secret in those interplays? Yeah, well, including that plus how to increase butyrate producing bacteria, I will talk about it in the next video. So this will be the topic of the next video. 
Yeah. Uh, for more detail about Kyotango, please watch my other video. It's called Kyotango, a Japanese blue zone. I made this video three years ago. So information is a little older than, you know, this video, but still it covers the main things about Kyotango region. Yeah. And uh, for, you know, the Dr. Shoji Kondo, uh, please read the Ikigai Diet. And also the book also talks about the Ichibutsu Zen Taishoku that I talked about. And Hare and K. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Hachef Takamiya, the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and please subscribe to my channel and please leave your comment. Yeah, did you know about Kyotango region and did you know about butyrate producing bacteria? Thank you. Well, I will see you in the next video. Live with you, Ikigai!